Gracious God, we seek your spirit now. Move in this place. Move among us. Speak to us. Let us know your word. Let us feel your presence and hear your message for us this day. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Epiphany is not really a church word. You know, sometimes on these big holidays of the year, we have these words like, say, transfiguration coming up in about a month and a half that are they're church words that you never use outside of the setting of these pews. Epiphany is not really like that. It's, it's a normal word. It has a meaning in English language. It's even used sometimes. An epiphany is a discovery, especially an unexpected one or a sudden one, one that comes almost out of the blue. Ah, I had an epiphany, you might say. It's a revelation that comes seemingly out of nowhere. It might reflect something you've learned in school or in some research you've done. It might reflect something you learned as you're working in the field about how what crops to plant or not crops to plant. Or if you're a person that does, say, plumbing, no understanding how pipes fit together. That's something I have never had an epiphany about, so uh, I, I have amazing grace for those who know that. The point is, we all have epiphanies all the time, and we even use that word in our English language in our normal conversations. But when we use the word within church, well, the meaning is more specific. An epiphany in church is a revelation, yes, but a revelation of God. A revelation of God's glory, of God's presence, of, of God's word. An epiphany is that we get a glimpse of the divine, even in our world that is mortal and normal. An epiphany is this day, or technically again, technically Thursday this past, this past week was epiphany. It's always January 6th, um, but we're celebrating it today, so we'll say it's today. This day it is. The day when we celebrate the coming of the Magi. It's the end of our Christmas celebrations. The decorations are going to come down. The candles will go away for the year. And we'll stop singing Christmas carols every week. It's the end of our Christmas time. And it's a special story. For the Magi come. They seek Jesus out. They follow the star. And they find him. Bethlehem, in a house with his parents, they have an epiphany of God in the Christ child there in Bethlehem. Epiphany in church is a day. And it's not really a season. When I was growing up, I was taught the Sundays after Epiphany or the season of Epiphany, and that's not really quite true. Technically, I mean, only pastors care about technicalities, so I understand this, but technically, next Sunday begins ordinary time until Lent begins on March 2nd, not Epiphany season. But we're going to pretend otherwise this year, at least for a few weeks, because that other meaning of the word, that normal meaning of the word, also still applies even here. And the next several weeks of scriptures give us epiphanies about God, give us glimpses of God's glory and presence. And that's going to be our sermon, I don't want to call it a series, I'm not counting how many weeks it's going to go yet, but sort of a sermon series on epiphanies these next few weeks. Reflecting on the season that's not really a season, but the ways the scriptures show us God give us epiphanies week after week for the next several weeks here. We begin with the Magi. 
because that's where Epiphany starts in the church. Here that is what today is. We begin by following the star to Bethlehem and seeing the Epiphany the Magi had and asking what Epiphany might be there for us this morning. The Magi, I said, had an epiphany. They had a glimpse of God, a glimpse of the divine, and that glimpse was Jesus. And as we begin our epiphany series, we look at the same Jesus. And there are epiphanies waiting for us in the story. The first is one that we almost forget about in the story, so we're so used to it, and that is simply that Jesus is what we expect him to be. The Magi went to Herod first. They went to Jerusalem, to the capital city, because they thought it was a divine proclamation in the stars and who were, which were the people live, who are royal and kings, but in the capital city, in the palace. They went where they should have gone. But that's not where Jesus was. They went where they expected to find royalty and a king. But that's not where God meant to be. Not with kingship in general, and not certainly with Herod, who was a pretty terrible human being. Jesus is not always what we expect him to be. Now, sometimes he is. I hope that you expect to find Jesus here in church, and that when you come, at least most weeks, you do indeed find Jesus right here. But sometimes, our story of Epiphany tells us, sometimes Jesus is in unexpected places. Maybe it's in the woods, while you're hunting, or fishing, or camping. Maybe it's in school when that kid who's been so problematic this year gets it or smiles or makes a friend. Maybe it's at school and you're a student and you had a rough year, a rough week, a rough day. And there's a friend, a teacher, a moment where you see grace, experience, care, and see, even for just a fleeting instant, the presence of Christ. It might be in your work, it might be in your family. might be in a book you're reading, and not a religious book you're reading, but just some funny novel that you read and say, oh, that's a God moment right there. The story of Epiphany reminds us that the epiphanies we receive from God are not always what we think they'll be. Because we cannot put God in a box. We cannot layer up where God has to be. Just as the Magi did not expect to find Jesus in a house in Bethlehem, we too might find Jesus in places we don't expect. And thanks be to God for that. The second thing that I think our readings this morning revealed us much about Jesus is sort of the topic of last week's sermon that Jesus is light, that we see in Jesus the light, that we are called to reflect ourselves. Now this is more Isaiah 60 than Matthew 2, but it's there, and it's one of my favorite Isaiah texts. Arise, shine, Isaiah says, because your light has come. <coughs> Isaiah is giving a call to action. Now Isaiah is not talking about Jesus per se, more about just what God is doing in the world, but as Christians who have seen God in Jesus, we can apply the same words. 
because Jesus, the light of the world, has come, because his light shines upon us, because we know God's love through him, we are called to arise and shine, to arise and love, to rise up and be the hands and feet, the voices, the people that reflect back the glory of God found in Bethlehem, that reflect back the glory, the epitome of God found in our text this morning and in Jesus every day of our life. One of the epitomes of this morning is that we are called to reflect back what we see. We have work to do. Called to love, called to care, called to serve, called to be lights shining in the world. I, mean, I give you all images if you want. You know the Psalms. This is the light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. Yeah. The song, pass it on. It only takes a spark to get a fire burning. So it all goes around and warm up in its glow. Choose your favorite song about light. Um, you could use the song, my kids play the song, The Firework by Katy Perry. Baby, you're a firework. Let your, I can't think of the exact line, but oh, yeah. basically, you're a firework, go let yourself shine and light up the night. Choose your song. That's the call. Call to shine. Reflect the light found in Jesus. And then, friends, we cannot go home the same way. The Magi are warned in a dream not to go home to Herod because Herod wants to kill the baby boy. And so they go home a different way. Thankfully, most of us don't have to worry about how we're walking home affecting the lives of thousands of two-year-olds and younger. But we cannot go home the same way either. Because Jesus is coming to the world that we might be changed. We cannot leave this epiphany. We cannot leave the presence of Christ the same. We are called to be transformed, to be changed, to be different than we were because of the presence of God in our lives. Now I say that, and uh, you know, here's the reality. You can only be transformed lots, so many ways. But every day, as we seek Christ, as we hear God's love, as we seek the presence of our Creator, every day can be a moment in which we are transformed a little bit. And bit by bit, day by day, hour by hour, moment by moment, we can be transformed into the disciples, into the people God wants us to be. We cannot go home the same way. We cannot leave here the same way. We must allow ourselves to be transformed every moment of our lives as we seek the one who comes to Bethlehem and gives us a call. <coughs> Epiphany is not really a season. It's just a day. And it really is Thursday, not even a day. But God's epiphanies last all year. God comes to us in every way imaginable, in ways beyond our imagining, all year long. And even during these next few weeks, God gives us epiphanies of a love that meets us where we are, even in places unexpected. Epiphanies of a light that calls us to reflect and share with others. Epiphanies of a grace that transforms us ever more closely in the disciples that God calls us to be. And epiphanies of yet more things about God in the weeks to come, and we will discover them together for the next several weeks, and I hope you will join us. We seek the one born in Bethlehem. We seek the man who 
comes and teaches about God's love. We seek Jesus. And those who seek him are never disappointed. Thanks be to God. Amen.